Hi, it's Jennifer Escalera. Thank you for joining us. And I'm with a guest here, Alicia Yang. And Alicia is a success coach, psychic, and self-proclaimed manifesting queen. She <laughs> actually combines the spiritual and physical worlds by taking guidance from above to create surefire practical strategies that skyrocket her clients to success. A big believer in true love and magic, Alicia's mission is to help you find your special superpower, AKA your zone of genius, and turn you into the superhero that you were destined to be. To work with Alicia, visit www.yestotheying.com. Success starts by saying yes to you. Welcome, Alicia. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you're here, and I'm super excited to share your wisdom, hear your story. They need to know about you because from the first time that we met, um, and how we um, ended up meeting was through a a mastermind group, and right. just like totally connected. We're like soul sisters, and yeah. ever since then, each time that we come together, it's such a, a laugh. Like we have a <laughs> natural good time. And so I want to share with these women um, your story. And so my first question is, how did your success coach business come about? So my success coach business started when um, it kind of came about because I started as an acting coach. And so I'm an actress, <clears throat> currently a professional actress, but um, to make money, I was like, you know, coaching other actors on the side. And what I realized was like, I started getting like regular clients coming in and some were kind of like, you know, high up there. Like there were some A-listers and then there were some others, but the ones that were loyal, they always came back to me. I was like, gosh, like, you know, why do you keep asking for me? Because there were obviously like way higher paying clients at my studio. Like I was just a beginner or whatever. And they're like, there's just something about you where you bring out this confidence in me and you like have helped me book these roles because I just feel so much better about what I'm able to bring to the table in my auditions. And I was like, oh, that, and it was really interesting. So I started to look at um, kind of the ratio of time that I spent in all of these um, acting sessions. And no joke, at least 50% of it had nothing to do with acting. It was really about removing their self-doubt and fears and getting them back to a place where they felt really good about what they were bringing to the table and their abilities that they already had. So when I left the acting and I, I, I really felt passionate about seeing one of my clients, not just book the role, but seeing them go to that next level where they're like, oh my gosh, I have the confidence to do this. This is what I meant to do with my life. Oh no, I really love playing these kind of roles and really seeing them own who they truly are and finding that love not only for their craft again because I don't know if you guys know Hollywood's a, a beast of a business that will rip your soul apart mm -hmm. but they also like found a new found love for themselves and their you know who they are and their integrity and so I ended up then getting into online business where I was like okay I would love to you know help other people, not just actors, get the success that they desire because it all comes from that feeling of loving who you are and knowing that your gifts and talents, you know, are important and they are needed in this world. So that's kind of how the success coaching began. And I just love seeing people start to embrace who they really are and shine that light out. And that's honestly the most beautiful and rewarding thing to see as a coach. Absolutely. And, and how has your journey brought you to this place of magic manifestation? So that's a really funny question. Okay. It sounds funny, but it's a funny story. <laughs> okay. So since I'm an actress, no. Okay. Right. So, um, I mean, I've always been spiritual. Like I, <laughs> I've, <laughs> I'm obviously Asian. If you're listening to this, then you wouldn't know that. But if you're looking at this video, I am Asian. So I grew up in like with, you know, in a Buddhist household, but we still celebrated Christmas, but I lived in a Jewish neighborhood and then my best friend was pagan. 
And like my parents never had me decide like what religion to go to, but I knew there had to be a higher power than myself on in this universe. Cause I was like, if I'm the smartest thing in the universe, then we have got a big massive problem on our hands because I don't know anything. Yeah. And so um, cut to all the self-development, <clears throat> trying to make it as an actress, getting bogged down by all of the suppression and negative energy and, and society. And my, I went on this epic long journey of trying to figure out how to be happy and free and feeling, you know, abundant all the time. Yeah. So last November, for some random reason, I started seeing dead people. And it was really flipping scary. Can I swear on this? I'm trying to keep this clear. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It was really fucking scary. Um, and this is kind of where the magic manifestations really started to shift for me. So <clears throat> I've, I've always wanted to be a superhero. I've always believed that I, I'd love to like wave my hands in the air and just have magic shoot out of them. But like, I don't know how. Yeah. So anyway, the universe apparently decided to give me this gift of seeing, of being, I guess, what you would call a psychic slash medium slash channel slash like, you know mental superpowers. So I was with a girlfriend of mine. She had lost um, her twin flame. He had died of an overdose and she could not get out of the grief. So I was trying to console her. And literally like I saw this guy approach my car because I was sitting in my car and he was telling me to tell her stuff. And I guess she's woo too. So I was like in the moment. And so I just kind of started telling her things. And she was like, oh my God, that makes so much sense, blah, 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 blah. And then like the quote unquote download, as in something took over my body. I started saying things to her about her karmic lesson, her twin flames karmic lesson, their karmic lesson together, what the universe wants for them. And I have no idea where it came from, but she was like, she got really quiet and she's like, that's exactly what I needed to hear. She's like, that feels, that's exactly right. Thank you so much. She felt so much better. And I left. <clears throat> and then the guy like smiled and then he left. So at first I thought it was a figment of my imagination <laughs> because I was like, I'm an actress. I watch too many like superhero movies. <laughs> this is like, you right. know, whatever. Um, but what was weird was, um, cause obviously 2016, a lot of people passed away in, on, in this earth and quite a few of my friends had their friends die. And so these, their, the spirits of their dead friends would come to me while I was hanging out with them and would start saying things. And so then I was like, okay, maybe it's just with people that I know. But then a stranger came up and was like, my friend just committed suicide. And I saw this girl with like mousy brown hair and she came to me, like it literally looked like a person. And she was like, can you just tell her like, it's not her fault. She couldn't have done anything to save me. This was a lesson I had to learn. And so I just delivered the message and she's like, how did you know that it was a girl? And I was like, cause she's standing right there. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, right, right. Yes. So needless to say, my world kind of twist turned upside down. Acting did not seem so important. Right. Yeah. And um, so I did a lot of like, you know, finding other woos and, you know, psychics and shamans and people who understood what the hell was fucking going on with me because I started seeing good spirits, not so pretty spirits, you know, things that look like death eaters. I don't know. Right. Um, but once I started getting a handle on it and then deciding for myself, like what angels I actually wanted to communicate with, what kind of messages I personally wanted to deliver to people, um, mine are good and loving messages. <laughs> If you want kind and loving messages from your angels and ancestors, definitely give me a call. Yeah. I don't do bad things. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of started going from there. And once I was able to tap into my angels and ancestors and really have a conversation with them and ask them for guidance, because, you know, they're technically watching over us at all times. So they're seeing everything from that higher place, like a removed place from the situation, right? So they can see all the moving parts. Um, their guidance was so accurate and it kind of allowed me to really pick like, 
the, the right strategy for me. It allowed me to make decisions that really much easily got me to the success and the money and the happiness that I desired in a lot more of an easier way. So <clears throat> once it started working for myself, I tested it on friends. They got, you know, their ease and happiness started to come a lot, you know, faster. And so now I feel like, I mean, I'm still stupid, vapid, LA. I love like shopping <laughs> and I, 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 yes, we're in a physical universe. So I'm going to enjoy these physical things right. like food, right? Food is yeah. delicious. Sugar is delicious. Yeah. Um, but I've been able to come up with this great balance of taking this, this spiritual guidance from above and be able to deliver practical step-by-step -step strategies for my clients and my friends and myself to get whatever it is they want to fulfill their dreams, to, you know, manifest more money, to, you know, find the love of their lives, what have you. Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, Cause I don't want to forget it. You said back in 2016, when the magic really started manifesting and you started to see the spirits, um, was there something going on for you uh, in your life at that time that allowed you to open up or to receive? Um, or was it just, it was your time? You know, <clears throat> I, have, I have asked them this, and I have asked quite a few people this, um, because I did not ask for this superpower. I have always said, I want to be a superhero because I just think it would be really cool. Right, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I've never ever wanted to see dead people. It's never been like a fascination of mine and I hate horror movies. So why would I? Um, <clears throat> but I think what someone told me was that there is, there, there have been these prophecies um, from like the native Americans and from other, um, other ancient cultures that talk about how uh, there will come a time in the world where, 1000 light workers or like rainbow warriors or there's lots of different names but just these healers will come onto the planet <clears throat> to help you know rid it of evil you know the hate of the the degeneration of mankind and bring back that light and love so it can restore peace and balance to the world so i guess i was chosen at this time <laughs> based on the plight of the planet in general Mm. Um, and I do think that it is something that I have been called to do. And I think that, um, after too many synchronistic, um, things happening, it was like the world's at a very like pinnacle point and they needed more people to, you know, spread their light and bring this awareness. So I was given this gift um, and then interestingly enough in January, I was in LA hiking with my girlfriend at Griffith park, <clears throat> my woo one, my, my spiritual one mm -hmm. She literally looks like a pixie. She's like uh -huh. Uh -huh. teensy tiny and she's got this little voice and she's like really cute. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I got the call. So mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you listeners know about the hero's journey, but it is basically a storyline um, structure that a lot of movies and authors use to tell these like epic tales. Like when you like the, like Ulysses, like in the Odyssey, Hercules, <clears throat> they go through these 12 steps. <laughs> so one of the beginning steps is the refusal of the call. <laughs> Because ah. you've got an extraordinary person in an ordinary world, right? Like Superman is an extraordinary person who comes to an ordinary world, Earth. And it's like, there's first that refusal of like, I don't know if I should be here. I don't know if I should use my powers. I don't know if I want to really like even be a superhero or, you know, be there a freak. There's that doubt because you get ridiculed. You, you're different from everybody else. You don't fit in. Like your interests and your passions just don't align with the, the cool, cool gang, you know, of what's like, you know, in and, you know, whatever. And we all want to be accepted, right? Yeah. yeah. 
So I was like, I don't want to tell people that I see dead people. Everyone thinks I'm an actress. Like, this is awkward as fuck. But Mother Earth literally, like, stopped me in my tracks. Like, I literally couldn't move. And her voice was huge in my head. And she's like, you need to strap on your armor and rise up and fight this fight for me. Because, as you know, like, the planet Earth is actually... (laughs) <laughs> disintegrating at a, yeah. an alarming rate. Yeah, she I'm is. like, yeah, yeah no, <laughs> like I'm not going to. And it like got louder. It was like, you know, like do it. And I was like, oh. And then it's a little terrifying and scary because I've never had a voice be that loud in my head. Um, I think in psychic terms, it would be like clear audience where you can yeah. hear it. Right. And so finally, I was just so like freaked out and I couldn't move. So I was like, well, it's either stay here stuck until I say yes or just right. yes or and move on. <laughs> and then she, so, and she's like, and I was like, fine, 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 I'll do it. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, great, I'll have the fairies come to help you on your journey. Because heroes will always be given allies as they move on their quest. Yeah. Right? Like Frodo Baggins in The Lord of the Rings. Like he's got, you know, he means Sam. So, right, right. Um, so then she released me and I was able to, you know, catch up to my, to my girlfriend. And when she asked me what happened, I told her and she was like, Oh, well, I'm glad you accepted the call. And I was like, awesome. Well, I guess. And she's like, uh, say it with more feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that brings me now to, you know, now, like to today, where um, I had a basically download or you know request from the spiritual realm to create this like school of magic where I can help train other people who are secretly their own like superheroes and actually do have superpowers and they just need to like accept the call because <laughs> eventually it'll get so loud. Yes, it does. But to accept the call, find their superpower, and then just really hone that skill so that they can also shed their light into the world and, you know, bring love and peace. Absolutely. That's such a beautiful story. And it's just, it's, it's such a human explanation of what you went through, right? Because the, my people, um, my community, a lot of us are empaths and mm. are intuitive, but it's through this self doubt or self worth, uh, lack of self love, we tend to put that aside and don't believe in our superpowers. And so I love that you're able to take us through this journey and be able to know that those of us who are struggling in our calling or our purpose or just what makes us happy, what makes us laugh, there, there's experience. You've gone through it. And even though you resisted it and you doubted it and you got a little worried about what were people going to think of you, you still trusted in some way that this, this was it for you. Yeah. And I, I want, you know, anyone who's listening to know that like, it's so normal to have those fears and doubts. Um, I am a little bit of an empath too. I'm not as much as other people, um, but I am highly sensitive and I'll be honest, I am, I still get scared today. Um, it is terrifying to, um, to address these fears head on to have like past cultural DNA stuff that's just stuck with you. You're born with it. So it's like, well, you know, it's like, it's not your fault, um, but it is part of the journey. And, you know, that's one thing that I love so much about you, Jennifer, is like, it, it is so much about loving yourself first and being able to know that, you know, nurturing yourself is, is, is like it now, at least for me has become a non-negotiable. Like I have to do what makes me feel good first and make sure that I'm taken care of because especially with empaths, if you can't take care of yourself first and make sure your love tank is full, you don't have anything to give to those that you want to help because you're already such a good people. Can you share with us one tip that you actually do that we can use and 
Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I love, uh, I have so many self love things, but I really love, I've gotten really into guided meditations. Mm -hmm. Um, it's something that has helped, um, calm my anxiety and my overwhelm and fear. Yeah. Um, so like I started with like the headspace app, um, and I've done some other guided meditations from some people that, um, that I liked, but, um, I actually have, I, I was doing a, a webinar for, um, my friend's group and I got this download to do this tune into your heart guided meditation and <laughs> no joke, this whole thing. It just, it was literally from above, but basically it's, um, it's tuning into your heart to discover who you really are, who you truly are, your soul, your essence, right? And then what your heart desires at this current moment in time. And um, I call in Archangel Raphael because he's the one that, um, I work a lot with the, with the archangels, um, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, he's the one that, you know, deals with the heart and yeah. with love. And so I have this, I did this guided meditation and I love it. And it just helps me tap back into what's truly important for me and then am able to like relax. The other thing that I um, also like to do is just to like, I love to journal. That's my other thing that I love to do. So normally after one of those guided meditations, I'll write down what I saw. I'll write down the messages that I got. I'll write down what my intuition was telling me. And it's really a great way to have that physical reminder of the guidance Right. So that moving forward in the day, just to remember, like, I am loved, and I'm lovable, like, you know, there's an abundance of love in my life. Right. And then... Oh, I love that. And do you do this guided meditation in the morning, or just, is there a structure to it? Yeah, so um, I wake up, normally I have crazy night, like, weird dreams, because I, I astral travel a lot when I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a whole other superpower. I asked the universe for more superpowers and I got them and but now I'm trying to control them. And I'm like, I don't know what's happening, but that was really flipping weird. So, um, cause I'm a huge law of attraction person. Abraham Hicks says like, you know, you wake yeah. up in the morning and you, it's a fresh start, but it's not a fresh late for me because I'm like, where the fuck was I? Yeah. Why was I trying to jump off a cliff? Like this is so, <laughs> so for me, the moment I wake up, once I kind of off that off. I do the guided meditation and then I journal for like anywhere between 10 minutes to 30 minutes. So my self-care routine in the morning is long, but I, I have to do it. Um, and yeah. then I always end my journaling with the affirmations of what I want to have happen that day. Um, so That's one of my favorite affirmations is like, um, magical miracles happen for me today that make me jump up and down with joy. Ooh, that's so cute. I love it. Yeah, thank you. Because like, you know, we, I feel like, I don't know, for perfectionists and stuff, it's almost like trying to control everything. Yeah. Okay. And the universe works in the most magical, incredible, like magnificent ways. So if I just leave it up to like some surprise, I'm like, universe, surprise me today yeah. with something good yeah. and something great always, always, always happens. Oh. That makes me jump up and down with joy. Ooh, that's awesome. Ooh, that, I'm yeah. going to try that. <laughs> it's my favorite <laughs> affirmation, hands down. Because no matter if you want love, no matter if you want more money, no matter if you want a better business, no matter if you want more clients or to lose weight or whatever it is, just be like, you know what? You're just going to deliver me a magical miracle <laughs> and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I love doing anything that's fun and it's creative and it's using your imagination. I mean, our self care, our self love practices doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be challenging. And so that's why this resonates with me. And I think it's going to resonate with a lot of people listening or watching watching to this video you know i i love it thank you so much for sharing you're so welcome we, yeah, thank you so how can we stay in contact with you alicia so you can always contact me um at you matter at yes to the yang.com because you do matter to me yeah, i love that <laughs> 
So um, you can always email me there, or you can go to my website, which is www.yes2theying, and in my southern accent, so that'd be y-i-n-g.com. Cool. Um, or you can also just like like my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash yes to the ying. Um, <clears throat> and I'm on there every single day. So if you want to message me, if you have specific questions, um, or if you want to have, you know, uh, I don't know, just to get in touch for like a one-on-one -on -one coaching session or even just a strategy session or reading, um, I'm more than happy to help out anybody who really wants to bring out their superhero power cool. and rise up together. And I think you also are going to be sharing something that's free, right? Yeah. So for like for listening to my whole diatribe and all of my crazy stories and stuff today, I would like to gift you um, that um, that tune into your heart guided meditation that I was telling you about just a few minutes ago. Um, I'm going to send Jennifer the link so she can email it to you, but it is through my School of Magic, so it'll be www.theathenaschoolofmagic.com forward slash, this is so long, free dash offer dash heart dash meditation. Um, but <laughs> if that's too long to remember, um, Jennifer will email it out. Um, and this is just a special offer just for you guys. Um, I don't, haven't even offered it to my group yet, but Aw, thank um, you. Thank you. Yeah, I just, love you me. guys, I, I really love, lo I'm so obsessed with love. I love yeah. love and loving yourself, loving others, and, you know, romance love and true love. And I think that love is really all we need in order to get to where we need to go and to heal this planet. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I'm trying to spread the love <laughs> with as much as I can. Yeah. Well, thank you, Alicia, for sharing everything about love and this magical manifestation. And I hope that anyone who has gone through this with us today will contact Alicia because she's the real deal. I am a testimonial. She did a reading for me and it was so much fun. She even gave me a visual. She sent me what she was seeing. Uh, she sent me a, a YouTube video of my guide. And yeah, it's so beautiful. So. <laughs> your guides are amazing. <laughs> I love your guides. They're, they're, so, they're, fun. they're fun. Yeah, they're yeah. so fun. So you got to check her out. So thank you so much, Jennifer. This was a joy. Awesome. Well, take care, everyone. See you next time. Bye.